I, I yeah, by right. I did a search here. I'm in Florida, and uh, you you popped up all over page one. I mean, you got images. You got uh, uh, the keyword I used was uh, Emily Lockblub blouses, and you popped right up. The, you know, your images are there. I mean, it's great. You're doing great. Yeah, I, nothing wrong with everything that she's doing. She was saying that she added that Amazon Pay because she saw somebody else had used that, and it seems to have really helped. That's interesting. Another good SEO experiment. That Barbara keeping us on our toes all the time. So, let's uh, now that we've got that done. I hope that everybody who is listening had a chance to be able to understand what was going on. Um, I'm going to introduce us first, even though we're running a little bit behind. I've started the recording. If you don't want to have yourself on camera, just turn your camera off. That's fine. I'm Tom Garrison, and uh, this is the SEO Tom live stream. I'm a volunteer and administrator in Alignable.com for the SEO for Small Business Group. If anybody uh, doesn't know that, then I'm talking to all the people who are watching on streaming. I think it's just crickets over there right now. Uh, I've been doing this for about 25 years in both um, applying, uh, uh, creating websites and uh, doing applying SEO in both WordPress and Joomla. And uh, I am available to hire as a consultant or web development, whatever you need, along with Arthur Moorhead. Say hello, Arthur. <laughs> he's waving to you all and if you need some help on Elementor he's the person to go after he, he'll tell you everything all the ins and out uh, if you're streaming if you're watching the stream in YouTube you need to go over and register in order to view the videos that we've done we've got over 30 of them and you can even sign up for Alignable for free and access all those plus whatever that you got there in YouTube. And for those of you in our group, just below, at the top of the page, just below the word resources on the right, you'll see a link to the videos, the previous videos. You will also be over in my site where you'll need to register for free, but it keeps the public out. So you'll find all the recordings there. You can find more recordings in SEO Tom and YouTube. So we're all over the place. So no problem trying to find me. Um, and as we were talking a few minutes ago, and Barbara said, SEO is an experiment. So for everybody who's new here, you're going to hear that a lot from us because it really is. There are no do this step and this step and this step and then you're almost home. No, it's you try things that you know need to be done. And then you have to go back and try to maybe edit them a little bit or completely change them. It just depends on what you've done and where you are. So there's a lot that goes into SEO, but it is an experiment. So today, before I get started, I'm going to go and show you how to use paint.net to kind of dispute and help with people who are having trouble with their images and trying to find something that's easy. So any questions before we get down this road? A lot of new faces, so if you've got a new question, you can hit the reaction button and raise your hand or just raise it on the camera. And I'll unmute you. Okay then, no questions. Send the link to that. The link- I think I have to get a link to your website at the the website or the uh, yeah okay you so. do both I guess SEO imaging oh uh, I'm still not clear what you mean can you come online Carolyn Let's see if I can find you here in the mix there you are Are you there, Carolyn? 
Hey, uh, it wouldn't let me actually unmute. Um, you had just mentioned uh, sending or going to a link for SEO imaging and how to, I guess, I don't know if that's like indexing it. I was wondering if you could send that. Um, back up. I wasn't quite clear what you mean, but there's a link in our group page up at the very top under the word resources. In fact, below that, there are a bunch of pages for new members. Read those things because they're full of a lot of really good basic SEO information. So, Carolyn, uh, there's a link right below the word resources that takes you over to my website where the previous 30 some odd videos are listed. Is that what you meant? No, but it's okay. Please continue. Well, I wasn't, if that's where you were uh, talking about, I mean, I can go further. I wasn't sure if that's what you meant. No, you had just mentioned about SEO and imaging. Um, so I imagine it's like you are indexing a photo file. No, I'm going to show you right here in the meeting. Okay, sorry. Please continue then. We're not on the same page, but... Um... I don't want to detract from your presentation. Okay. All right, so let's see. Any other questions before I get going? Raise of hands, that'll help in moving forward. Okay. Let me pull up paint.net. And as I'm doing that, Share that screen. This is paint.net and it's extremely simple. And that's the idea. That's something that I think that is good for everybody, whether you're really involved with images or if you're just getting started, it doesn't make any difference where you are. This is just plain simple. You can create whatever that you want here or for our purposes, what we want to do is load an image and so I'll go grab one here and because we were messing with these yesterday and because I know it's going to make a liar out of me you'll see in a minute we'll take this image and it's huge but it has to do with Barbara's particular page so you can open any image and you can save it as whatever image that you want. You can find this list here. You can save it as a PNG, a bitmap, TIFF, GIF. You choose whichever one that you want. But for the purposes of going on the net, you want a format, which is what these extensions, that's what JPG and GIF, those are particular formats for the uh, image. You want the WebP format. That's this one that I've got highlighted right here. W-E-B-P. When you save it as that, it reduces a lot of the, Im in the information in the image itself. Now that's in general. There are times when you'll find that WebP or your software is not saving let me say that differently, not reducing enough information in the image to make it worth your while. So it doesn't mean it's the gift to every image. You have to look at the image itself and then see how much is it saving. Now I'm just taking an image that's the exact same size as the one that I started with and then I'll reshare so you'll see I can compare these things. So here was the original, and you can see it is 2049 by 931, 299 KB. Okay, so here's the one that I just did, which is a test. So same size, but it's 368. Now, instead of, I mean, the first question is going to be, why is it bigger? It should be reducing. It depends on the image, depends on what's going on nine times out of ten it is uh, paint will change it to a much smaller image but the bigger question is if it didn't don't stress about it don't try to go back and say I've got to figure out what happened with that particular image no don't waste your time we're gonna go back over to the 
search engine and search compress images and you're gonna find a bunch of them it's not like you have to use a specific one because they all pretty much do the same thing I sort of like tiny so if we go to tiny you drop in whatever image that you want now you can pay and get to the other one or not uh, for that matter let's see if I can get to a different one here you can go to online image compressor and kind of looks like Firefox I prefer Firefox over Chrome but you can upload whatever you don't care what it is as long as you are working on that one image that's giving you a hard time and this particular one I would say that that falls into that group because using a simple method and software that normally works really well to reduce that didn't work this time I'm not going to sit and try to think of why now Arthur's laughing because he knows that I do that with everything but my point is don't worry about it don't if it didn't work on that one and I do the same thing I go well I couldn't quite get it to do anything different original is 300 so a compressed it's 299 that should tell you something hmm that image is pretty well compressed there's not a whole lot that you can do let's see if we can reduce the quality and see what that changes okay so now we got it down to 157 KB what's the quality of the image now if you got a loop an image loop you know for getting down and looking really close at an image and maybe even if you just had a magnifying glass that showed you you could see well it's not quite as clear as it would be and of course this side is designed to be kind of a mirror so you're not going to get clarity there but this side you know it's up to you is that clear enough because you're going to do the same thing with your images people are just kind of passing through your website you, th you think that they're going to sit and stare at that image for a while they're not they're going to go oh I see the image and go down because they they roll through the whole page going huh let me take a look at this and then they start over again usually go back up to the top but this image as far as I'm concerned I would say you know there's nothing really wrong with that picture so I'd use it and I'm saving almost half of the weight that I had in the original image okay so apply that and then you can download your images it's just that easy so it's I didn't stress about why my uh, paint didn't do what I thought it would I don't care I have other things and that's the thing that you always want to remember keep several tools if you tried something it didn't work in that one don't spend a lot of time because if you've got a bunch of pictures on your uh, bunch of images on any one page or throughout your website it's gonna take a long time so don't try to think about how come on that one in particular and let's see if I can get a couple of links we're gonna put here's the image compressor and I kinda like that one even better than tiny because it, the tiny one seemed like it was a bit more complicated um, let's see any other questions before I move forward no questions raise of hands nothing in the chat Brenda you had something Uh, yes, my question was um, the the paint program, the first one that you mentioned. Can could you share a link for that one? Because when I looked for it, I I having trouble finding it. For whatever reason, apparently I got muted. Arthur, did you do that? <laughs> okay uh, paint is elusive because it's called paint.net but it's not found at paint.net so 
interesting is that little bit of information okay we're on this page so if you search and I'll put the paint.net and I'll put the link here in the chat in case you just want to write it down it's getpaint.net and here it comes in the chat there you go everybody now has a link to paint.net <laughs> confusing little thing I have no idea why they did that I'm sure that paint.net belongs to somebody else and when they came up with paint.net they were mad that somebody's already got the domain so anyway that's it for that particular image now I'm this is going to get into what should be a, a long list of questions and I have no problem with that that's what we're here for questions about resizing anybody have problems with resizing an image okay Matthew does he's at least one and I'm sure that there are more so let's take that same thing we'll go back to paint grab a different picture and we'll just grab something here oh, aren't these dogs cute I'm sure Arthur did the same thing when he was developing this site so here's something pretty simple that you can do we just want the picture of the dogs so I've highlighted that go to image crop to selection there you go there isn't a ton of things that you need to do to be able to get things done why is my hand <laughs> raised who's messing with me today Arthur um, so you can just crop it or you can say I just want to have this little part of the dog and that's fine you go back up to the exact same thing and you can cut it down even farther just want his face okay cut it down and then you decide it what you want to do with it and again anytime that you're going to save a file save it as a web P that's the best way to go and done so it isn't like you have to think about what uh, you need to do with an image but let's just say I need it at specific size okay so bear with me on this one let's say we need this a little bit smaller so we're gonna go in here and if you look down on the left side of my screen you should see the bounding rectangle and you'll see the numbers change as I move my mouse around on the image then if you want to go pixel by pixel use the arrow keys for either up as you can see I'm changing the height both up and down let's make it 120 even and I'll make the width 120 even I now have a square picture here you go so you needed a picture that fit into a spot on your site that was 120 by 120 now you have it and then we'll save that one as a web p save it whatever you'd like whatever name that floats your boat okay how's that for simple on images resizing changing it to a different format there isn't a lot to it so a lot of times you'll have a program that you have to run through and go yeah this isn't working I gotta figure out how to use this program paint is designed to be it does all these things and it does it simply it should take about maybe 10-15 minutes for you to get used to where are the things that you're going to use all the time but if you wanted to create something that you have a whole bunch of layers 
start with whatever size that you want and you can create all kinds of layers add a new layer or duplicate the layer you won't see anything change but over on the right side you'll see aha I have the background and now I have a layer so again those are things that you can get into when you're messing around with paint and we have a couple people asking things in the queue crop images from your PC if not what are you using yes I am uh, Steve was asking are you using paint.net to crop images from your PC yes you can is wherever you want to pull in the image is up to you somehow it's going to end up being at um, somewhere on your computer that's where you're looking for is the images that you have because you're dealing with stuff on your website will paint and if Steve your question may have been are you able to to pull a uh, manipulate an image that's on your website in paint.net no I don't know a software that can do that but maybe there is it needs to be on your PC Mac or PC well that's something else I have to remember paint uh, do you have you have to download the software first, right? Yes. Download the uh, paint.net software, install it, and then you've got it here, whatever you're going to do. Um, paint.net does not have a version made for Mac. So if you've got a Mac, I don't use a Mac, and I know that the couple people that I've talked to who do use a Mac have more expensive things. I'm pretty sure that there's some inexpensive or free things for a Mac. I just don't know of them right offhand. Any questions on that? Uh, maybe somebody in the group has a Mac that they use a small image uh, or a small software package that they use for images. Anything like that? Okay. Nobody's using a Mac except Barbara in our group apparently. Okay, so now let's take some questions on that stuff about the images. Who's got some questions? I know you do. Go ahead, throw them out there. Gonna have to raise a hand so I can unmute you. And look, there's a phone in our group. I wonder if the phone talks. I see an image of a phone, that's all awfully quiet group you don't have any questions about how to deal with an image or even better why would you mess so much with an image anybody have an answer to that might be a good idea to cover the consistency and size if you're using WordPress you know pick a certain size for background images landscape images and portrait images and keep it consistent through your pages. So like a background image would be what I use is 14 pixels wide by 900 high. Then for a portrait image, 600 by 800. Then you have 1200 by 900. You know, as long as you keep the images sized consistently, when you load them on WordPress, they're going to line up. Because if you have different size images, like in your blog rolls, or uh, if you have image boxes across the page, and they're all different sizes, then they're all going to be skewed. So if you have four images on a page, crop them to the same size, and then upload you know, you don't want to take an image that's 1200 wide and put it in a 800 wide viewport. Uh, so if you have four images, make them all 600 by 800. Does everybody understand what he meant? The hands that thought that was kind of confusing? 
Okay, Brenda. What? It keeps switching over the place. There you go. go I'm. Ahead, uh, I'm. I. I'm really, really new to all of this. Okay. Um. So. A lot of it's sounding a little bit kind of very foreign to me. Um. But one of the things, so one of the things that I, I'm not manipulating my website a lot yet, but sometimes I have to put images someplace and it says to me, I think I understand what the use for that, that paint.net would be. So it says to me, I have to use a JPEG. Uh, for example, if I'm, if I'm, if I have a PowerPoint and I'm trying to put a specific image in a PowerPoint, um, I can see where this would be useful because I need them to be a specific size to fit in the slides because I have to put like three logos on a page. Okay. So, and of course, uh, slideshow is going to be a bit different because you're talking about um, something that's finite compared to a website where it's infinite because there are so many different devices that are coming to it. That goes back to what Arthur was saying. If you've got three pictures that are supposed to line up on the same page they all need to be the exact same dimensions if they don't you cut you get this lopsided stuff but with your video uh, with your presentation you don't have to necessarily worry about that you don't have devices coming in so if they look like they're lined up they look like they're the same size then your presentation will be fine if if you've complied with what the software is telling you that you need to do, that should be fine. But when you get into your uh, website, um, part of also what Arthur was saying was that the aspect ratio of an image means a lot. In today's world, everything, a, a, a good site starts with a responsive uh, form platform. So you need to have something that is going to allow mobile devices of whatever size and whatever age to be able to view your pages as close to the same as you would on a desktop as possible. So if these images are not in the proper format, they're not in the size correctly, and they're not um, following the what am I trying to say? The, the dimensions are off. Then you then your device when it comes in and, and the page resizes, it doesn't show the image as it's supposed to be. So it's going to look goofy. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying to me then. So if I was putting those three logos onto my website, but then I was looking at my website on my laptop and on a tablet and on my cell phone, the images have to automatically change size to fit those different screens. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Okay. They, it, if the image is put in there correctly, then yes. If it's sized properly, um, then it, it will look right. I'm trying to think the simplest way to describe um, And this is important for SEO, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's not so much the SEO portion doesn't really uh, trickle over into the size of an image. That's a visual thing for your users. But if it's way out of proportion, if it's too large, and and we run into that a lot. Developers like to put a big picture into a website because it takes more time. To crop it properly so they'll they'll load that up to the site and then expect that the software and your uh, browser will resize that image properly is that going to be done yes but that is the wrong way to put an image into your website because if you do that you now have let's just say that you only needed that 150 square image but you put in this 2000 by 2500 image. 
all of that image, that 2000 by 2500, whatever that size is, the browser has to preload that whole image and then break it down to, oh, we just want you to see this small image. When it's doing that, it's waiting. It takes time to do that. Now, if that image was automatically 150 square, comes up that fast. And what that means to you is speed and as far as your page loading time. If your page, if any one of the pages in your website loads in more than three seconds, usually a, set, a mobile device is just going to bounce. They're going to leave. They give you, mobile device users give up to three seconds for a page to load so they can interact with the page. They can click on things, scroll, do whatever. If it takes longer than that, they just leave. So what's that mean to you and your business? If people are leaving because your pages are slow to load on a mobile device, that's between, what, 67 and just over 70% of the searches done. So that's 60, 65 to 70 something percent business visitors that you are literally just telling to go away. And everybody here is trying to figure out how can I get more traffic? So that's why we spend the time on images. One of the biggest reasons that you don't get traffic to your website is because the page loads too slow. And the other part of that is if it loads that slow, Google doesn't display your site in mobile searches. There, it's all coming, all the, uh, uh, the uh, pages in the uh, search engine are in the same database, but Google's algorithm stops slow pages from being shown to mobile devices. It looks great on your desktop, so if you look at it at your desktop, it'll load fast and it looks fine. You cannot use that as a judgment of how mobile users see the page. So if it doesn't load fast, you're losing a tremendous amount of business. That has to be addressed. That's why we spend the time on the images. SEO is all about the text on your page. So anything that interferes with people getting to that text is part of your SEO problems. Images are the biggest one that get in the way. Make sure that they are optimized well. Any other questions on that? Oh, best, Vic, the best settings. That's an open-ended question because it really depends on what you're doing and where it is. Where is the picture going to be? Can you come online, Vic? Let's see, where are you here? Here we are. Yeah, I, I try to keep them at a four to three ratio. You know, Hello, how are you them. doing? Go ahead. I'm, I, I apologize, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're not, go ahead. Um, yeah, actually, the size that I'm the requesting was um, I do photography, so it's a uh, main main priority for me is because I'm posting on blogs uh, regularly, and I I do at least um, anywhere from 100 to 150 images per blogs for clients so that they can come and see the work that we do. So the settings that I want, you know, I want to make it easier. So my, my website loads, um, I have settings because I use Lightroom because that's how I do most of my editing and things like that. Um, the, the file size, the resolution, the length, it's all a factor, of course, for the page to load. So my question would be, in your opinion, what is, what are the best settings to help my website load faster so that Google can see it better. That will help the SEO and everything rank up higher. The smallest that you can get the image on the page, <clears throat> always going to allow the page to load fastest. So 
just as an example, if you've got a, I'll go back to what I've been saying, 150 by 150, that's a fairly small picture. In some instances, you can make it even smaller. I would if I was going to use what I'm going to suggest for you. And Vic, this is going to be a long discussion that you have with your customers because it's imperative that they get traffic. Otherwise, they're just having a nice uh, blog page with a, lots of, a lot of pictures that they really like, but nobody can come and see them because the page loads too slow. What I usually suggest, if you're going to have pages, especially a photography page or blogs about a lot of photography, make a, a thumbnail area where you have several images that are just thumbnails so that people can click on the thumbnail and see the larger picture. That thumbnail is going to save that page to be able to allow it to load faster. And of course, if you get into you know, 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 thumbnails, well, then you're kind of back to the same thing, except that they all load so fast, you should probably still be okay. How many pictures are you trying to load on one page at a time, Dick? Sorry, it wasn't letting me unmute. I apologize. That's okay. Um, My fault. It, so everybody understands we've had some issues. So everybody's on mandated mute until I unmute you. Got it. Got it. Um, so it can range. Um, I use actually Squarespace to host my site itself. I was with WordPress before, but it was such a hard um, to update things with the hosting site. So I switched over to Squarespace just to make my life easier. Um, I can post anywhere from 100 to 250 is the limit on each blog post. And um, I've limited the photos as much as possible. I've kept my file size to be for each file only 500K. And the longest on the pixel size is uh, 2048. Um, so that way, at least the resolution on the computer is better, as well as it helps it, uh, what do you call, customized directly to mobile itself, which is on AMP uh, for the SEO itself. Um, and that has worked for me so far. And um, it's work, it's, it's doing its job what it needs to. There are just some, sometimes that I can, I feel that when I'm actually trying to showcase the site um, to certain clients, their, their mobile is not pulling up as fast as we need to. And um, so I figured maybe it's the web, maybe it's the images that are, are a factor. Um, so that's why I'm trying to minimize as much as possible to bring it down. But when I'm trying to uh, limit the size in Lightroom, it gives me errors that it cannot be below a certain size. In this case, 500K. Uh, go back to that part. What is telling you that you have to have at least a 500K? Uh, Lightroom, which is the uh, photo editing software, because that's where I store all my images and sort everything out. When I try to export them out with the pixel size as well as resolution, the file uh, file settings will say limit file size 500K. Anything below that, it's going to give you an error. It says the image cannot meet the limit, then it will be exported to the minimum possible file size. Let me see if I can take a screenshot of it to help. Well, I, I kind of know where you're going. So it's telling you because of the type of software, it's saying it needs to have a large image. Right. Because yeah, that's Lightroom. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you're do, that's just the opposite of what you're trying to do with any website page. Okay. Um, that's why I suggest when people are trying to show a whole lot of uh, images on one page, you use a, um, a table or some format. Uh, you'd actually be better off with the, um, what am I trying to say? The breakdown, the image or uh, blocks that break down so that whatever the alignment that you have for the images, on a mobile device, they'll break down and come into columns. Got it. Um, 
so you do need that responsive but if you had an area that's got the images maybe there's two or three or five or whatever it is make them small thumbnails now if your software is not allowing you to do that then um, Arthur if you're familiar with that I I'd say you're going to need to use something else because you're you're loading pictures on the page that 2000 by something or that 500 KB that's too big so if you have more than one on a page that's way too much go ahead sorry well he's you know he's got a couple of things going here I mean the size and everything that he's doing being that he's a photographer is okay you know I mean it's it's not you know um I mean usually with WordPress the uh, what they require is 248 uh 2048 you know but what wordpress does is it creates four versions of the same image and breaks them all down to different sizes so that way the browser can determine what image to use as it's up you know as it's uh, loading into the browser but with squarespace squarespace doesn't have a media library at Squarespace, you have to upload images. So if he takes one image, it doesn't go into a library. He has to keep re-uploading that page, that image to every single page. Correct. Which is, yeah, which is one of the things I do not like about Squarespace. I know. And yeah, I mean, it's um, the other thing is when you're putting that many images on a page, it's going to load slow no matter what you do. Got it. You know, and mainly those pages are not found on in search because of how slow they load. You know, so what I would say is if you take the image itself and make sure you do the SEO to the image, like the alt tag, the descriptions and things like that, you have a better chance of that image showing up in search than you would that page. But as, but as a standard of what you're using for the images, I don't see, you know, I don't see it being out of line. You know, okay. I mean, you're a photographer and you need to have that kind of clarity, you know, and, but with Squarespace, I mean, I'm not sure there should be a lazy load setting that'll help with your speed. And, you know, the other thing about Square, you, you don't have no control over the server. Exactly. You don't have no control over the caching or anything, whereas with WordPress, you do. Well, you know I mean? with when, when I was with WordPress for many years, what was happening was that the, the same information that you gave where it takes one image and makes multiple copies of different sizes automatically in the background. Um, because I'm loading so many images on so many sites and my blog is continuously uploading things with clients so that they can come and see their their uh, their uh, portfolio um it is my, my i was blowing through my size of what my uh what wordpress was able to handle and i well, was it's, it's it's not what wordpress can handle it's what your server can handle correct wordpress wordpress can handle a million images okay i misspoke i apologize i meant to say yeah. server which was the company that i was using so I, I was on a, I think it was a 10,000 images or files. And within a couple of months, because it was continuously changing or adding extra files different, on different sizes, the server, are, I was already close to almost a million and a half files. So that's why I switched over to Squarespace to avoid that issue itself. So now I've moved over. It's working for the most part. I've, I've, I've just... My whole, my whole reason for joining the group and this particular thing was how do I make the file size better so it's much more comparable to any site itself. And I'm just trying to make life easier for, for myself, <laughs> nothing else. Well, you could, you could host them elsewhere instead of Squarespace and then embed them. Got it. You, know, you, you could use Flickr, uh, image, you know, image hosting companies like that, and then it'll load quick. Got it. Know? Um, but I mean, your hosting, you know, you, it depends on the level of hosting that you have. You know, okay. if you got if you got uh, uh, five ninety nine a month hosting, it's not going to be able to handle that. No, you know, you need to have something like WordPress management 
Got that it. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, so, okay. you know, and a from... light speed server. I mean, you could even go to a cloud server. Okay. I, I switched at the end of my session. I did switch to cloud server with the hosting company and it was such a heartache and uh, I'm still, you know, just trying to close that account. I was almost paying almost what twelve hundred dollars a month, wow, <laughs> for a cloud service because I was yeah. I went through I went through a, a, what do you call a um, the file size immediately you know within a couple of months and I was like I didn't I didn't upload that many pictures there's no way that I can have that many but they would not believe me so I was like okay so that's why I figured this this time around just start from scratch the Squarespace has worked fine. Uh, I, I can do majority of the SEO in the background and just using Google My Business to help promote the sites more and that's helping. But now I just want to make sure that I get the file sizes a little bit better and easier for, for the site right. and for well, my clients. A, well, to be honest, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with your file size because I, under, you know, I understand you know, your business. You know, and you know, I mean, you, you got to have that kind of you know, that kind of file size, you know, the two, you can't compress them. Right. You know, yeah. You could take a 2000, a 240, 2048 image and compress it and reduce it, you know, that way. Right. And you could also cut your size down to, um, you know, to a 1024. Okay. You know, and okay. that would help. You know, Got it. I mean, it's just an idea, but, you know, I mean, that about the only thing I can really think of, you know, and if Squarespace is working for you and you're doing like Barbara and utilizing a Google business profile, I, I don't, I don't see you having any problem. Okay. All right. Well, we'll try the other sizes, see if I can lower it more and uh, bring it down. So it'll help load faster for the, uh, for the mobile also. So I appreciate yeah. the info. Something. What did, um, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, is that your, could you put your link in the chat? Sure. It's just my name, which is, this I'm putting is, it in right now. It's just Vic Chahan. This is his site here. If you don't see. Yeah, I want to pull Vegas. it up. Pardon? So I just wanted to pull his site up and oh, see. Gotcha. Yeah, he put this in the chat. Um, what I was going to say, Vic, is the screen resolution the the resolution of your images plays a lot in uh, photography right but the problem is without a lot of really fancy software on the server you can only see 72 dpi okay i forgot about that yeah and a lot of people feel like if i show this huge picture because it's a 300 dpi they're going to really fall in love with this image they can only see that at 72 DPI. Ah, I didn't know that. The, the browsers are not capable of showing a higher resolution. Because of that, that's why I keep coming back to if you have these images in a thumbnail and they pop it up, they can see the larger picture, but there is not the possibility for them to ever see the quality of that image. Correct. So it's it's like a catch twenty two. Darn it if you do and darn it if you don't. But at least if you put the thumbnails in and allow people to click on that, there's two things. They don't have to scroll so far, and they just click on that image and go right to the next one instead of. Well, let me see. I got this one, but I can't pop these up. I kind of would like to pop. Up. Well, the reason why they're not. Uh, the way that I've set it up in Squarespace, which it allows me where if you, you can't click on that so that right. it helps you not from stealing it. That's the whole idea behind the way that it's set up through Squarespace. So, uh, I mean, you can still take screenshots of it, no problem. That's understandable, but you can't physically click on the images. It won't pop up anything because then you can take that full image and just do a screenshot or go to the background and download it that way. Vic, do you see this little screen that I have up here now? I'm looking at it, yes, sir. I can see every image in this page, and I can right. scroll to the bottom and select that and save, and save all that. that fast. I understand. 
But see, you're you're computer savvy. My clients are not. Oh yeah, and for the, <laughs> for, the for the people who are um, not going to do that, yeah, that's great, and that's good for your clients. But if you're concerned about somebody doing that, in other words, those who would do what I just showed you mm -hmm. are the people that you're trying to do something to avoid. It's it's either um, give them the picture at a low resolution, let them go ahead and click on the thing, or you do something that's going to stop that, which there are some ways in a pop up, um, depending on what you use for it. But in a pop up, you can also make that a, a no right click, but somebody can still get around that. Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, it's not a perfect system, but it's the no. best that we have that yeah. that's available. So. And, and I would say that going back to and seriously considering the uh, format where you just use thumbnails and pop them up, you're going to have a, a, a better chance of getting the mobile devices into the site, which is what you're looking for to gain traffic. Okay. And even the people that you're trying to show the images to, they won't need to scroll through everything. They can just click on one. And that usually opens up a pop-up that you can scroll through those images altogether. And you never have to move around. It, you don't have to close that, open another thumbnail. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll try to uh, half everything, the the, uh, the size of the file, as well as I'll bring the resolution down to at least 72 or even 80 um, on the resolution. Yep. And then see if the pop-up is an option. So we'll try that out on, on the next couple of blogs and we'll see where it goes. Okay. Sorry if I took I sorry if I took up the time of the of the no, chat. No, no, that's a lot of a lot of what we'll, we'll uh, do is for everybody. Will Squarespace allow uploading W uh, WebP format? Because I looked I, at I ran a test on your site, and that's a, probably the biggest thing that you have is everything's JPEG and not, and you can convert it to WebP, and that would help. I actually have not uh, looked into that part at all, so that is something that's new to me. Um, I don't know if that option is available through Lightroom to make a WebP, but I'll have to see if that option is there. Um, cause I, I, the last I looked when I did the export system to their site is only JPEG, PSD, TIFF, PNG, DNG, and original. And there's no way for me to know the formats that they have available for export. Okay. So and, have... and that's the cloud, uh, that's the cloud version, correct? Um, well, this is the classic version. I have I don't have the cloud uh, version because I there's there's so many limitations, and I go through thousands and thousands of images. So I need <laughs> yeah, I need I, need I can understand that. Yeah. Well, you don't necessarily have to use the cloud storage, but exactly. Um, exactly. You know, the, you know, but then you're talking about your computer and massive ten external <laughs> hard drives and. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm on right now almost uh, um, five 12 gig hard drives or 12 terabyte hard drives. So it's like I'm running out of space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's fine. But I, yeah, maybe there's another app that I can use that will convert the JPEGs to WebP for Mac. Yeah. They, well, before, before you spend a lot of time on that, make sure that Squarespace will allow it. You could just do a test one. Okay. I will try it out. I'm not sure. Yeah, because Web, WebP is still not accepted by a lot of, uh, uh, I don't think it is. I don't think Wix accepts it, um, Spotify. Um, you know, there's there's a few others because it's still relatively new, you know. Okay. And, you know, so test it before you waste any time on it. we Will do. we Will do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Let me put this back in here for you, Vic, so you have this link and you can. Okay go and compress and change the uh, the format as well. Okay. So you choose and go through the quality, that sort of thing. And uh, it gives you the option for WebP on here? Or it just downsizes the images on this file, on this service? Well, you're going to compress them. You're not necessarily going to change them into WebP, but we can. Okay. Use... No worries. Um, there is a, another site called Convercho.io that will convert your images to WebP. 
Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find a link. Right here. I use it. I use it a lot. Um, right, right here, I believe you're looking for. Correct. For sure. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Got it. So that that will help you tremendously in getting that speed up. Okay. Great work, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So amazingly enough, um, if we don't have any more questions, I'm amazed that we got that through in an hour. Any questions on anything? Oh, Barbara has a question. Hi, Barbara. Thanks for the question. Bye now. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Go ahead. So um, to speak to Vic's comment, Photoshop will do a WebP as a, as a save or, you know, Lightroom or whatever you're using on a Mac. After all our work, Thomas, yesterday, I uploaded my WebPs and Magento won't take a WebP. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Which I'm thinking can't be, but maybe in the newer... Right. Um, version of Magento, maybe it does, which I'm not ready to go to yet, but uh, I just wanted to say that, so. It could be your server. Uh, could it be, even if I'm on a VPS? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, well, I'm not sure. I mean, the servers I deal with, you know, there are settings to okay. accept zip files and things, you know, a lot of times servers, you know, they won't have that engaged. So you may want to contact them and tell them that you're not able to upload WebP. It's Magento. I see. I, I think it might be Magento because I'm not even getting where I can upload the photos. Usually, you know, once I once I click upload, I'll get a, it, another thing will pop up for me to confirm it and i'm not even getting the pop-up to confirm it yeah, probably can't do svgs either yeah mm, yeah i don't know probably. but i did reduce the dimensions of my photos uh, on my slider and they seem to be fine you know as we talked about and it has reduced the size don't are look you, now i haven't saved it are you using um Magento 2 or 1? 2. Oh, well then, yeah, there is, if in Magento 2, there is a free um, plug-in that allows you to use WebP images. Oh, okay. That one, oh, somebody's charging money for it. Another guy is saying, here's a free one. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times my developer will have, you know, free plugins because he works with Magento. So I'll, I'll look into that. Here's it was the, just. Here's the link to it, but I'll show you what I'm seeing here. I can share. And. There it is. So there you've got your uh, Magento to WebP images, and it's free. Okay. Have your developer take a look at that, and that would answer that question for you. Is it free? Yeah, zero dollars. That's what's saying. Free license, no support. Oh, no support. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I think I'd pay for the support. <laughs> Well, the problem is that somebody else was charging one hundred and forty-nine dollars for it. I, went, I don't think so. All right. But yeah. also reducing the size of the images, as we talked about <clears throat> yesterday, you know, helped reduce, you know, the oh, overall sure. amount. Yeah, because you know, not everybody's going to be able to do WebP. Right. You know, right. I mean, like you know, it's like I said, it's fairly. I think it's only come out. It's only been out for like three or four years. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and it, right now there's a lot of uh, software that's just not capable of using it, you know, but that'll change, you know, as progress things, you know, go. I mean, before, I mean, here not long ago, you couldn't, you couldn't upload a WebP at all to WordPress at all, you know, but now you can. Um, somebody was made mention in the chat under the impression that the Google business profile is slowly going away from location info on images. I hadn't heard that. Any input on that, Arthur? I'm sorry, what? Apparently, the there is uh, in the chat. Um, Google Business Profile is slowly going away from location info on images. Hmm. I'm not seeing what you're looking at. Uh, Vic's response in the chat. Response to Steve. Well, you can, Steve, you were um, talking about um, Geo Google Business Geo Profile, but optimizing images, you, you optimize them and you put them wherever you want. It has, and if you're saying that you cannot upload to Google Business Profile, I'd find that that would be interesting to verify that. Steve, you still with us? The location of the images, you can just put use that in this alt tag. Go, go ahead, Steve. What I've got is images from a client that I'm putting that I'm using and I'm setting up on their Google business profile, but the images themselves don't have any location information. I was hoping to try to figure out a way to add the location information to the actual image for a Google business profile. Just add it into alt tag. I hadn't thought about going that route. That's easy. Okay, yeah, good. Easy. I asked if there was an easy way to do it, and <laughs> Arthur came up with it. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, just add, you know, city, state. I mean, I wouldn't go crazy, you know, and put a whole description of, you know, exact uh, measurements and degrees and everything else. You, but, you wouldn't put yeah. the GPS coordinates in there. Is that yeah, what you're telling no. me? That, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. You know, but I mean, search is smart enough to know that i mean the images will show up you know for the people who are searching near me for instance you know dog training near me and if you got an image with uh like my location is naples florida and naples florida is in the alt tag of that image or the description or the title then that image will show up in the search as long as that image is relevant to the uh, location. You, know, you want to use something else in the alt tags other than just lo location. So if you have a picture of a puppy, you would write in the alt tag, you would put uh, eight month old puppy, uh, Naples, Florida. Okay. Okay. Would that, would it be advantageous if, if you're trying to locate to a, to a store? to use a zip code or postal code or anything in that? Yeah, you can put Somebody zip. else has suggested that to me once. You can put a zip code in it, yeah. I mean, that's that's not going to do any geolocation like you're thinking. I mean, it's not going to pinpoint it on the map or anything. You know, but as long as that image shows up in search, when somebody clicks on it, it's going to take you to uh, wherever the image is hosted. It makes more sense and keeps you out of more trouble if you do the first suggestion that he was saying is when you've got puppies in Naples, Florida, instead of just that number. Because anybody that did a uh, puppies near me and they were somewhere around the Naples area, then that's going to come up. And if they, if they put in their zip code, it still is going to come up because Google matches the zip code with the city 
and the surrounding area. So they're doing a geolocation right. for you. Right. Okay. I was just thinking about going one step further, but no, I throwing that in the alt text just makes it a whole yeah. lot simpler. I mean, yeah. Busting my brain yesterday for three hours trying to figure out how to do this. <laughs> oh, well, Google is going to be doing that, but if you try to create a workaround for it, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Yeah. You know, it's one thing about Google. I, I, I see it so many times. People try to find ways to outdo Google. And when they, and when they do, it might work for a week or so, mm -hmm. but the algorithms will catch you and they'll put you way back on page 150 or something. Yep. Or they won't yep. even show the image at all. You know, and if you're trying to do something like that on your your business profile, they'll just simply shut you down. Well, this particular client that I'm working with has just gone through that because they had a whole bunch of spammy GBPs coming back to their site. And uh, we're working on getting them brought forward again, which is important for their business because that's where they get, they figure about 25% of their revenue comes from their Google business profile. So it's uh, trying to get them back there. And I was thinking if we put in the geolocation that that might help but i from what you've just said it makes perfect sense just put that in the alt text and just put the name of the city yeah. and and yeah, I uh, mean, description brief description yeah because technically technically you're not using geolocation you know you're just describing the image and where right. the image was taken you know so i mean i don't see anything wrong i don't see how the algorithms would penalize you for that, you know. I, I have I haven't seen it happen. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, all tags are important, you know, for any image. It tells Google what it's for, what the picture is of. Yeah, images and videos are will show up in search faster than content. It takes yeah. a while for content to show up in uh, the searches but if you got videos and images and it's the seo and uh, uh what we're talking about here about the sizing and compressing and making sure they load fast they will pop up quick okay. thank you very much guys last question barbara go ahead i don't have one <laughs> I, I just forgot to take my hand down. Sorry. Your arm getting tired. I can make. I can make one up. Well, that said, thank you, everybody. That was a good meeting. I'm sure we covered everything. And if you need to get in touch, feel free to connect with me through Alignable. And we will see you next week. Thanks, everybody. So long. <laughs>